Welcome to the wine show at home. But tell me about your ban from Twitter. I was on holiday in Hamburg with some friends and we were trying German white wines because we never had German white wine. And you thought, well, they don't really, you know, you'd, apart from Blue Nun, you never really think of German white wines. And we had some Rieslings and they were lovely. So we were sitting outside and my mate had just got the new iPhone with the portrait mode. So he took a picture and I was holding this massive glass of white wine, very happy with my wine. And, I, and it was such a good picture. I said, that's amazing. It really looks like I'm doing an advert for wine. Uh, so then I just thought, oh, I'll put it up on Twitter for a laugh. So my advert for wine was, try, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, so I won't, but try wine, it's effing great. And me holding it like that. And, uh, and loads of people liked it, went, you're right, it is effing great. And, but somebody complained and said that I was encouraging young people to drink alcohol. Um, so I didn't realise that was a thing. And then eventually... When I actually, so I just asked people on Facebook, you know, oh, I can't, I can't get on Twitter and I can't get a hold of anyone because you're just emailing a computer and eventually they'll notice, so they notice lots of people, they noticed famous people. Like famous comics like Dara Brian, Ed Byrne, Emma Kennedy did a lot to get me back on and when they noticed them going, oh, why are they interested in this person? And, um, and then they couldn't have been nicer. They were like, oh, we're so sorry. Obviously, we didn't know you're a comedian. Commute, the algorithms don't know you're a comedian, so they have no sense of humor. So they've probably banned you for lots of different things that they thought, you know, you can put a word in and it'll trigger something, but we don't realize that it's jokes until we look. So also we can flag you to let it know in future you know, this woman can say some pretty weird, weird things. So I'm back on, and but it was quite joyful. And, and like people I didn't know on my street who, but who follow me or some, follow somebody who follows me, so saw it on Twitter. So I came home one day, and there was a, just a bottle of wine on the shed, on the doorstep with a little note from two neighbours who I don't know, who um, and said, uh, who said, "You are, you're right, Joe. Wine is effing great. Enjoy." You know, so I thought. Oh, no, so I went up to you know number 70 I'll go and see them and thank them because people really defend wine yeah they really do oh they, they do it with wine yeah oh don't get on the wrong side of wine twitter you know we're a feral <laughs> lot do you want to try some we're just going to get you into a right. bottle now what what right. should I go for first the first thing to go for is um Babylon Storen it's a beautiful bottle isn't it lovely now what I've chosen for you I've chosen three wines that have all been banned because you were banned from Twitter. It. Yes. <laughs> and this is from South Africa. South Africa, everybody, drink more South African wine because South Africa's producers, all their wines were banned um, at the start of lockdown and nobody could get anything out. They couldn't even harvest because you weren't allowed to go into the vineyards to harvest. So there's all this fruit sitting there and they weren't allowed oh. to go and harvest it. So we need to go and support amazing South African producers. And I love South Africa. It's God's own winemaking country. Right. Right. Swirl in a sniff. You're going to do it properly. What do you drink normally? Oh, I drink all sorts. You know, I'm one of those people, I'll drink it, and if I like it, I'll try to remember. And if I don't, and sometimes it's places, isn't it? We went to Porto, and I found lots of really lovely Portuguese wines that I keep looking for here, especially white wines that are sort of peachy and mellow, mm. um, not acidic. And, but I don't know what ones they were, and I'm always trying to find them again now. I'm hoping this is in the moderately peachy, mellowish framework. Viognier mm. is very... Oh. It's... What is that word? The texture of it. Oh, yeah. There's a sort mm. of silky weight Stick. to this wine. Mmm. Mm. Viognier has a richness, oh. mouth coating. Absolutely. You can feel it. Mm. That's a, oh, no, I've had this, but I've had, I must have had, yeah. How do you say it? Viognier. 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 Now, is that, where is that originally from? Well, Viognier is from southern France. And incredibly, yeah. I'm of a certain vintage. We're, we're of similar ages. And yeah. when I started in the wine business, people thought this great variety would pot potentially die out. It was sort of disappearing. And yet now you find it absolutely everywhere. It's grown around the world. 
Yeah, because funnily enough, I, I think I saw it the other day when I was in the supermarket and I, and I thought, oh, I've had that recently somewhere and I, and I liked it. So it was one of those ones I was trying to remember. I mean, it's quite hefty in a way. It does feel sort of, isn't isn't it? It? bit of yeah, and, it, and I can really feel what you mean that coating. Mm -hmm. well, and South Africa makes these interesting wines. South Africa has one foot in the new world of Australia and mm -hmm. New Zealand, America, and one foot in the old world. So there's still a freshness, there's still a sort of restraint and a zippy kind of character, but then it's it's across the tomb. And tell um, me, what are you doing in lockdown? Are you able to perform? You can't perform, but. Uh, well, you can't perform in any sort of venues, um, but it, it's adapted quite quickly. I mean, one thing that happened at radio, there were, I was doing several different radio shows, panel shows, and they adapted quite quickly how you can do it in your house with certain software. And I even did, you know, the sort of talking heads TV shows where they show clips and things. And now what people are doing are Zoom gigs. So people pay for a ticket. But what they have to do is they have to be very select about who they unmute because you have to just, your locals that you know will just clap and laugh in the right places and not talk. Because the other night there was a guy <laughs> eating his dinner really loudly, obviously with a knife and fork and a plate because you could hear it clacking. And anytime it made a noise, it went to speaker because it kept going to speak of you. So it went to him <laughs> instead of the comedian because I hadn't quite set it up and worked out how to do it. So there's still teething problems with that. But it's so the first couple of gigs I did where it was um, just streaming out to nobody were just horrendous. And all comics were just in a state of shock going, well, we can't do this. Because you, you, even one person sort of nodding and smiling gives you your timing, but nobody, you, you're just like a lunatic, just talking, not knowing what anything means. I've sort of done a lot of stuff that was to do with lockdown and weirdly how much I like it. <laughs> I do. I'm like, oh, good. I don't have to travel, get drunk here. And up there is my bed. Perfect. And also what I really like is like I can see what's behind you. So normally in a gig, I do kind of judge the front row by what they're wearing and all sorts of things. But this, I can actually see them in their front rooms. Mm. Oh, that's heavenly. I love it. There's so much to play with. I love how different, you know, normally it's that kind of, you know, what's your name and where do you come from? And now you can do mm. what's your name and what are you having for supper? Yeah. And where did you get that sofa? Yeah. <laughs> Really, chintz? You went to throw it out? You Ooh, went to chuck you it out. Those, yeah, live, love, laugh sticker thing lights. I don't like those. Yeah. Right, I'm going to yeah. next wine. You want to get this fella out. I'm going to keep you drinking. The Invasion of Great Taste. And this, this is Austrian. It is. This. I'm going to warn you, this is the Jerry Sadovitz of wine. <laughs> wow. As somebody who lived wow. in Glasgow for 18 years, I am familiar with the work of Jerry Sadovitz in some yeah. detail. So you might find it a bit too pungent, as many people have found with Jerry Sadovitz's comedy. Yeah. Oh, wow. This was banned because the original label, you can hmm. see it says in, in this sort of rather basic text, it says invasion of great taste, console error, image not found. They had the space invaders... Um, yes. character on it and the Space Invaders people sued them and they banned oh. their labels so they had to produce this instead. Well, it was a bit spoil sporty of them wasn't it? No. I think it's fun I've never seen you know, I've never seen a label appealing to that audience. Uh, we should I've... see more of those. This is a yeah. the great variety is called Muller Turgau it's named after two dudes called Muller and Turgau I think they were both men I'll have to double check mm -hmm. actually but it's an orange wine so it's a white wine that's made like a red one. Can you see it's slightly cloudy? Yes. Yes. I thought that was my dirty glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's just your language that's dirty, Joe, not your glass. Yes. And it's got a sort of film almost on the top or froth. Yes. A slight spritz. Yes. Mm. Oh, I can definitely see. Oh, how amazing. I can see orange. It's slightly orange colour. Because they ferment it with its skins. As if it was a wow. red wine. I see. God, it's a, it really is incredible how you see the colour. It's like magic wine. Right, I'm going to go for it. You're an absolute joy to do a wine tasting with because you enjoy it all so much. Oh, I'm trying to think. I, the smell is different. Oh, God, it's, oh, you know, when you, oh, I do know what, what wine people mean when you get a smell and you think, I know I've tasted that smell. And it is a kind of a fruit. 
I don't know what it is. I don't want to prompt you because I sort of have an idea, but I don't want to prompt you. Wow. Makes your voice go deep, doesn't it? It's like, <laughs> oh, hello. Oh. Hello. You're a bit different, aren't you? Yes. It's allowed to put hairs on my chest, but yeah. if you put them on your chest, you'll, you'll be bothered. Crab apple mm. comes to mind. Do you get that sense of, you know, when you go into glass houses, if you go into a tropical mm. garden, you get that sort of aromatic yeah. walking through floral character. Muller Thurgau, Thurgau is quite floral, but it's slightly English greenhouse character to it. Or mm. actually, when I say English greenhouse, it reminds me of going into, there's the Kelvin Grove, uh, is it Kelvin Grove uh, mm. Gardens? And you go in there and there's sort of yeah. glass houses there and you get this sort yeah. of glass housey aroma to it. There is Ooh. a huge vine, actually, I think, in Kelvin Grove. I really like it because it's not like anything I've had. I like the spritziness and it's uh, it's sort of dry but fruity. Mm. It's surprising. The wow. the style comes out of um, Georgians really make this a lot, as in Georgia, Russia, Georgia. So, oh, so, right. Uh -huh. And it goes with everything. So if you're never quite sure what to serve and you've got some white wine food and some red wine food and it's, oh, do I have to have lots of wines? These wines, these orange wines, amber wines, Russian, Georgians prefer the term amber wines. They go with everything and they eat everything. They eat like yeah. demons. So it goes with the lot. So you just go, right, that's what you're having. Starter, right the way through to the end, one wine. And it goes with the lot. Because it, it's got enough mouthfeel to go with red meat dishes. So you can, mm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's what I'm running first. So you go, ooh, you know, You've got, got very good cheeks for that. Do that and go, ooh. <laughs> Oh, I really like it. And it's, so it's called an amber. Amber yeah, they, wine, orange wine. We call them orange wines. Georgians say, well, yeah. we don't have oranges and it's got no orange in it. We ah. prefer the term amber wines because amber is precious and these wines are very precious to us. Which I rather like. Raisin. I got such a strong raisin then as I went by. Just a real proper good old raisin smell. People talk to me about being a wine expert and they say, well, it's quite difficult because you got to know so much stuff. Can you tell you the only thing I've done that's ever been harder than my own job is one night of stand-up comedy. Oh, one night? <laughs> one night. I did, I, was, I did a cold open at mm. Ha Ha Comedy Cafe in North Hollywood. Did, had you wanted, did, were you thinking, oh, I might do stand-up or was it something? No, it, um, I was tasting wine with Gina Yashery. And oh, I said, well, I'll find a wine you like. And Gina has quite a distinctive palate. So we had to find this quite particular wine. And then she said, oh, yeah, I'll do the wine tasting. And you're going to do the stand-up comedy. So I've booked you tomorrow night to do this set. Um, hmm. And I think she originally said if I could cope with three minutes, she would be amazed. I think I managed seven. Uh, but it was all wine-related. My entire set was a series of wine-related jokes, um, which I've subsequently built on. So I would quite like to have another go, because I think I'd have... Yeah more confidence were you always a sort of comedy fan yes but not in a way where I thought it was something I could do at all I, I liked it and I liked making my mates laugh I think more than other people like it, it was more important to me like I would I suppose I would even go oh that was a funny thing I said I'll say that again which is probably yeah. makes me a sociopath or something. Um, but I, I did notice that. And it was funny enough that it was going to the comedy store, I saw uh, Jack D. Because the comedy I'd seen before that seemed, I, I liked it, but it seemed too complicated. Like I couldn't do it. Because it was sort of these structured jokes. And when I saw Jack D, it just seemed like he was just complaining and moaning. And it was just, he felt like a mate, just yeah. going, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that. And I was thinking, well, I don't like that. I could do this. You know, I didn't realise what he was, how complicated what he was doing was, but it was, it just, it was that feeling of like, oh, it's just like a mate talking. I want to do that. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Right, should we try some red? This is from Pukhari, and it's a combination of two grapes. So it's Rara Negra oh. and Fetashka Negra. Pukhari, Moldova is the world's largest wine producing nation per mm. head and per acre. So it's a tiny country, but they make masses of wine. But almost all of it would go to Russia. And Russia is endlessly banning their wine to try and force them to bend to their will. So Vladimir Putin frequently bans this. And it sends the whole country into a spiral. 
because they rely so much on being able to sell these wines to the Russians. So the more we can drink them, the more it takes the pressure off Moldova to have to go and supply wines to uh, Russia. Do you like that? Mm. I really, you know, (laughs) I really like the bottle. (laughs) I really like the feel of it. There's something really, really chunky about it. Chunky and weighty. Yeah. So would this be a grape that I would know, or this is their own particular sort of a grape? Fetashka Negra and Rara Negra are entirely Eastern Very European, good. Moldovan, Romanian grape varieties, and you don't see them. And we are, I think, one of the joys that I've seen in the last few years in the wine trade is that we're starting to see these grape varieties that were sort of forgotten to us, and they're coming back and they're adding all new layers of flavour and complexity. And so on. So it's not just Cabernet, Chardonnay, Sauvignon, which are great yeah. grapes, but yeah. we can enjoy other things. I mean, I've come across some great varieties. Was it? I mean, Georgia has more, I think it's something like 700 grape varieties that we never, ever see at all. And they have been saved for the world and for the nation. And some of them have the most amazing stories. Portugal, you were in Porto. Yeah. Ash Gonacan which is a white grape, means dog strangler. Because it's oh, wow. so acidic. Oh, my God. Um, it was just a particularly nice uh, wine bar we found that had really good tapas with it. And then they had the map, and they because sh- it's long and thin, and map and all the different climates. So they said there's loads of different regions in Portugal for the different types of wine, and, they have, and the green wines and all the different whites. So it was a really interesting place to just sit and go and feel your learning. Completely. And, you know, yeah. Oh, you'll have to come away with us. We'd have an amazing time. Right, we're going to have a road trip. I'm bringing the producer. Yeah. I want Joe Caulfield to come next yeah. time. We're going to have a brilliant okay. time. You'd love it. We'll roll around and find some great. We we filmed in so series three, which is coming up. We filmed uh, our base was in Portugal, and we travelled around uh, Portugal a, a lot, which is an extraordinary country. And I didn't know the history of it, and the, mm. you, you you sort of forget they were one of the great explorer nations of the world. You know, it's sort of. Travel yes, around the yeah. around the world, yeah. and, and they're great varieties. There's one that's called Borados das Moscas, which means fly excrement, and it's because the grape looks like it's covered in. Well, they fly need droppings. help with renaming their grapes, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh no, they need wow. an awful lot of help on that sort of thing. That's oh, I'm torn. Do I want fly excrement or dog strangler? <laughs> Oh, honestly, it's been brilliant. And I absolutely love this. It's great fun. Thank you very much oh, indeed for sort of joining us. I mean, I've been on Facebook and Twitter all day going, it's my dream come true. This is why I got into comedy. So someone would give me free wine and tell me about it. Um, I don't want this to be the last time that we get to go and have oh, fun I and time not. drinking booze. I've learned a lot. Thank this you. This is amazing. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.